Ruth Aine is a journalist and blogger, an occupation that takes up most of her time. Referring to her schedule as very hectic and tiresome, Aine says she has been carrying out her routine for quite some time, but occasionally felt sick and very weak. I went to see a doctor. I had been so fatigued I could barely walk out of bed. I remember struggling for about two hours to leave the house that day. As a result of the fatigue, Aine frequented hospital to carry out examinations. Trying to figure out why do I keep falling sick? Um, my primary physician had told me fatigue, stress. There were generally no reasons to explain as to why you have, you know, a funny, t you know, pain underneath your your rib cage, as to why you have your whole left side feeling weaker than the right. But little did she know that those were signs of lupus, an autoimmune illness manifesting in her body, yet Aine often got flawed diagnosis of her ailment. My main issues were urinary tract infections and brucellosis. Um, for the, the, I, I mean, I was in treatment from, for brucellosis, for example, for the last, for about three months from um, Ju December. So December, January and February as an antibiotics for, um, they're very deadly antibiotics for brucellosis. Now, what shocked me is because I knew my issues with brucellosis, which I first got when I was in high school, I had stopped taking dairy products. Dr. Francis Asimwe, a dermatologist by profession, explains that autoimmune conditions are a relatively new phenomenon here, and medical experts will need extensive understanding of a patient to diagnose them. Many times the clients or the patients who come in are more focused on the now. This may have been the fifth episode or the second episode or the tenth episode. Once you start getting some of that history out, that's usually the first clue that this is not what it seems. It's not about what's presenting now, but it seems to be a history. Aine tried several health experts with no clue at hand until her recent visit to another expert in July this year. My primary physician for a year said there was nothing wrong with me because lupus is very complicated in the way it manifests itself. It manifests itself in different, you know, as different diseases. This, to her, was relief because she now knew her complications and would therefore get treatment. I also got a point where I was tired because you know the doctor is going to, like my primary physician was going to do just about the same thing he does all the time. Dr. Simwe says delays in establishing these conditions can cause serious harm to other parts of the body. Uh, things where people lose hair, uh, things like alopecia areata, you have autoimmune disease of the eyes that end up attacking the sclerosa or sclerosa of the eye, you have autoimmune disease of the ears, you have autoimmune diseases of the teeth and the gums, of the pharynx. However, there are some visible signs and symptoms that can indicate a presence of an autoimmune illness. For the skin, we have, like I said, start with the hair loss. You have the things that cause color loss, so that kind of depigmentation. And then you have things which eat away the nails, diseases of the nails which are autoimmune. So one of the symptoms is chronic fatigue. So chronic fatigue is a thing. You, gen you just generally feel weak. Uh, and that means even if you sleep, you don't feel, wake up feeling refreshed. You don't Aine now spends up to 400,000 shillings a month on medication alone. And then um, I have to, not daily but monthly, uh, carry out tests for um, kidney, uh, kidney function liver function because the meds also do that yeah and then my supplements in the case of lupus once we have this there are options from injections to tablets for management of the patients and they are all chronic in the in that that we're going to be on this treatment for months and months and the patient should appreciate that there are also issues about lifestyle that we have to discuss with them, depending on the systems being affected. Uh, the treatment really requires education, uh, a choice, a well-calculated group of drugs, and 
lifestyle modification. But these have side effects, which include weight gain and body swelling. Like this hand has been swollen for like four weeks now. There's absolutely nothing I can do, and there's absolutely nothing that a doctor can do. Just wait for the body to realize what's going on and kind of heal on its own. Aine has now adapted to a new lifestyle to blend with this condition. So I don't eat gluten, so no wheat, no bread, no pastries, which I loved so much, no cake. If I'm not watching what it is that I eat, that means I'm going to have more issues. I, I mean, my immunity is down to zero. Generally speaking, they are chronic diseases. And generally speaking, they don't heal. What you aim at in management is to detect them and minimize the damage so that somebody can have a good quality of life. Dr. Simwe says this condition is currently common in females, but its collective impact remains hidden in current disease classification systems. He suggests that grouping these non-communicable disorders together may help promote research needed to identify common determinants and future prevention strategies. Walter Mwesije, NTV.